This here episode of NSFW Show, we talk about a live comedy album we recorded at Nerdtacular. Other things about Nerdtacular. And we have you call in. Yes, you, if you indeed did call in. And play a little game called Grab Bag Phone Tag. Except I just made up that name, but that's the game. I didn't mean for this to rhyme. It's all coming up on this episode of NSFW Show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 186, recorded on July 8th, 2013. Pig Latin 101. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. And by Shutterstock.com. With over 26 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW7. And Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. 20% off your new account. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. If your hot dog, if your hot dog tastes like a piece of wood, who you gonna call? Ghost mustard! <laughs> All right. That means it is go time! For NSFW! That's right, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Weberness, the show that is nominally safe for work. Hello, beautiful party people. My name is Brian Brushwood. In full duplex, techno Skype extravaganza, joined as always on the West Coast feed from Petaluma, California. It's Justin Robert Young. What is going on, Professor JRY? Oh, sweet Herbert Christ, Brian. Hey, you see what I'm doing right now? I'm leaving the music going. Uh, You're talking over it. Keep talking. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited, Brian. We uh, we got all sorts of things that we want to tell the world today. And more specifically, we got a lot of things that the world needs to tell us. Uh, specifically. So where do we where do you want to begin, man? This has been, first of all, can we uh, we, we got to set the stage. This isn't so much pulling back the curtain, but just just framing where we are right now. Uh, 48 hours ago, you and I were in Utah. We were at, at yep. Snowbird Resort. I had just finished performing. No, maybe at this moment, I was just finishing my stage show, my Bizarre Magic show at Nerdtacular. And then uh, and then the next day, you went to the airport and found out what? I had a, had a bit more of a circuitous route uh, back home, <laughs> Brian. Uh, as many might have known, there was a, a plane that uh, didn't land so good. <laughs> On the SFO <laughs> runway, and uh, I believe that's it, how it the news goofed. reported it. They said this na- evening a plane didn't land so good <laughs> on the runway. Yeah, that was actually how um, uh, I, I remember Walter Cronkite delivered the the news of the death of John F. Kennedy was uh, <laughs> America, our president's head done blowed up. <laughs> uh, so. What had happened was um, the the plane blew up and uh, I tried to go home, but because I, they shut down all the airport where I needed to go, what happened was everybody was going to all different airports and I couldn't get home, so I had to fly back to Salt Lake City and drive 13 hours to get back to Oakland last night at 4.45 uh, and then wake up at 7 o'clock so I could go do a, a go game at eBay. And then when I was done with the go game, I dropped off all the go game equipment and drove up to Petaluma so I could be here with you tonight. <laughs> so you totally uh, are feeling just great, alive and awake and alert. And, and I just Brian, feel like there's only one word I can use to describe how I feel right now. What's that? Caribbean queen. 
Now we're sharing <laughs> the same dream. <laughs> and our heart will beat as one. So, no more love on the run. Man, okay, so a few things about Nerdtacular that we got to we got Yeah. Play. First of all, uh, wow, the Diamond Club came out in force, and uh, they brought the amazing creative fun. It was I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, big thanks to Mitt Zula, the Mike Rula, the old schooler, who showed up with like 30 or 40 cigars and set up a cigar-smoking Diamond Club area outside that turned into... Like an impromptu Q and A with Scott Johnson, and then followed up by like thirty minutes of improv, uh, Captain Morgan. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I guess that was probably the, the biggest thing that was odd about it was uh, just. I mean, I think we were we were both kind of prepared for for the kind of community that would be there, but it really surpassed my my expectations, which were already very very high. Uh, it was an amazingly receptive crowd. Like everybody was just so in love with all the content. And and more specifically, because a lot of people who, who come out of uh, Nerdtacular are fans of like the Instance and um, a, a lot of very like wow or or specific kind of uh, shows, and they were all into uh, all this other stuff, and they were into what we were doing, and they were into what uh, you know, so all the other amazing talented guests like Terpster and uh, Nicole Spagnolo and her husband, the Wood Whisperer, and. Uh, just it was it was just amazing, uh, including all the the music acts that everybody was was into. But the the first time that we really caught that spark was was when Mitzula did uh, did the cigar night, and we thought it was just going to be six dudes sitting around, you know, pulling on our jeans, smoking cigars, and talking wise. Well, and, uh, and it was a it was a confluence of just lucky things. First of all, the fact that so many people. Caught wind. I, I don't even know how word got out. I guess over Twitter, Mizzoula flashed, you know, hashtag chat realm and told people about it. But where we had expected six people chatting and having cigars uh, in that space, having, you know, 40 people show up was huge. And then the fact that the space that he was picking because he wanted something outside that we could all uh, that, that would be allowed to smoke. And it just happened to be this little, you know, we're not going to smoke in the laundry room. <laughs> right. Let's be honest. Exactly. Nobody wants that. And so, and so, all of a sudden, we we realize that we're standing on a stage, and there's an audience there. So we're like, well, let's do something. So we begin by uh, by doing q and A Q&A with Scott Johnson, and of course, who uh, uh, I I think I was really proud of that little Q and A. We went to some really interesting spaces that I don't think he's ever addressed before. We got to hear a lot some of really stories. Dark places. That's right. We finally uncovered the dark side of Scott Johnson. Uh, yeah. No. And then uh, so we did a real fun Q and A, and then. Uh, uh, what we did, we did uh, some some Captain Morgan, which apparently is already on YouTube. <gasps> no way, um, somebody's already leaked it. Yeah, people are. Uh, uh, Chimera just put it up on YouTube. Well, somebody, somebody, um, give me a link to that. There we go. It's in there. Holy cow, uh, Mister Chimera ninety six. All right. Well, so there's that. Here, I'll open that over here. Man, I don't know how much cursing there was. Oh, on it's any apparently of this. Uh, uh, Patrick's listened to it and, and says it's not safe for the show, which I I understand. All right, well, fair enough. Well, uh, but hopefully it'll all be available. Like like that's the the second thing. So we get there that night. It's all about showing up the day early. The next day, it's the big. We start doing panels, right? So it's like the first one yeah. is on games and media, and then uh, <clears throat> and then we do the 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 all star. Face off challenge, which is like a trivia game, which uh, can yep. I can I just say for the record, like Brian Ibbett comes up with the most creative, the best trivia things I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, no, it was. I mean, listen, uh, let me just let, let, let me let just get this out there. Nerdtacular was amazing. It was it was uh, exceptionally put together. It was it was just uh, one of those events that really just kind of, I mean, to take it into a very sincere and non funny place. Like it, 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 it kind of really makes you uh, believe in life and community and, and love. Like it was really like a, 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 a defining kind of experience uh, to be there. And it's easy for me to say that because, uh, you know, we're like famous there and people treat us like celebrities. But like uh, I think everybody who went kind of really had a great time, too. So I was very happy about about all that. But you want to know what, Brian, we're going to talk all about. Nerdtacular. We're going to talk about the 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 show we did, uh, the recording. Yep. Uh, where that will go, what we did, where you can get it. Uh, but Brian, we also wanted to. 
play a little game with uh, the audience, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, also, remind me to tell the audience about uh, the true facts regarding the three bottles of Ruinum and the three disasters that befell <laughs> the area. Oh, I'll tell you what, man. I don't think there's any question that Ruinum uh, made an, uh, an, an auspicious debut. What, what was that? How did Mitzula put it to you? He said, let me just say some facts. Uh Three yeah. bottles of Three bottles of Ruinum left San Francisco and landed eventually in Snowboard and Snowbird, Utah. Right. Uh, in the intervening time, three days, uh, a plane crashed and shut down SFO. Right. And uh, three uh, completely uh, inconsistent rock slides shut down Snowbird, Utah. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. Uh, but uh, but the feedback was good on the Ruinum t- side of things. Uh, all right, so here's well, the game. Nobody's going to say it sucks butt to our face. Uh, that's no one's just going to look us dead in but, the but eye. But actually, say, you know who would? You know who would is Bonnie, and I was I was able to smuggle some back to Bonnie, and she would tell me if it if it sucked butt, but she said it yeah. didn't. Did you ask her specifically though? Uh you know what I did. Did you say Bonnie's? Does this suck butt? And then look her in the eyes creepily, <laughs> and then do just do the eyebrow thing. Like, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? And then, like, if she was like, she was like, no, it doesn't, Brian. And then you were like, could it? I just, re- I just realized that uh, there's going to be an animated gif of my frozen face and my dancing eyebrows. Um, all right. So, Brian, here's the deal. People are going to call into the show. And we have 10 things that uh, uh, do we want to give them a choice or do we want to randomly assign it to them? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we are just going to randomly assign it to them. Um, okay, th- th- but but they are they're gonna after they call. So you're gonna call. We're gonna play a little game we call grab bag. You're gonna call us, and uh, maybe we'll ask you for advice. Maybe you'll ask us for advice. Maybe you'll have to solve a math problem. Maybe you'll have to. Uh, what are some of the other things? Should I should I well, tell? Right, well, here's here's the, I got a list of ten, Brian. Okay. Uh, solve a math an eighth grade math problem. Okay. Uh, you can ask us for advice. All right, we'll give you advice. You have to sing a yacht rock song, and oh. I have a definition for you. Good, thank you. Uh, or you can solve our problem, so we'll give you a problem, and you have to solve it since you're such a big goddamn man. <laughs> All um, right. Five, fake cry. You have to fake cry. Yeah. Why not? Six, curse like a Mormon. Okay, how does a Mormon curse? Not it's up to us. Up good. to them. Oh, okay. Good call. Number seven, confess a secret in pig Latin. <laughs> All right. Number eight, tweet out a picture of your mom. Uh, you shouldn't. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just saying, listen, like they can do it or not, but their honor depends on it. That's true. It doesn't have to be a nasty picture of your mom. Brian could be a nice picture. I didn't even Who consider wouldn't want that a nice possibility. picture of their mom floating around the internet? I, I can't imagine anyone wouldn't. That seems like a good Probably idea. Probably your dad would love it. Probably. Say, look at that. I married that lady. <laughs> Put babies in her. That's what he's saying while he's watching the stream and Twitter. Do you realize how much better? He's in his underwear also. Do you realize how much better this is knowing how exhausted you are and how how running on empty you are? Number nine, reveal your voting history. All right. Number 10, pop quiz on current events. Uh, okay, that sounds great. Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna continue to tell our stories of Nerdtacular, but we're gonna open up lines to you guys uh, right now. Skype NSFW show on Skype. Do me a favor, turn down your radio as soon as I answer. We're just gonna throw you right to the wolves. So we're gonna open up that business right now. Uh, in the meantime, speaking of photos of your mom, uh, I got this. I got. Yeah, do you know what this is, Justin? A uh, urine sample. Well, that would be some clear ass urine. That'd be some clear ass urine. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, it is. Well, I mean, have you studied the intricacies of ass urine? Brian? No, I have not. It is a. This is a. This is a glass, and I love the fact that Bonnie's dad has been on vacation. He went up to Indiana and drove the RV up there, and came back with a, a jar, a, a peaches jar, with his handwriting on it that just says Kentucky moonshine. 
And he didn't leave it with Bonnie. He didn't leave it in the kitchen. He came up to my studio and left it right over here. And I don't know. I don't know that he's ever watched an episode of NSFW show, but he thought enough of me to number one thing, moonshine. My son-in-law will think this is great. Number two, sure. I, I have a feeling that let me just subliminally place this where I well, think it should be used. How about you crack that bad boy open and God give us a whiff? God. Okay. Describe the notes. All right. Well, first of all, it's that's clear, man. We're not talking no, no ruin them. Uh Kentucky Moonshine. Describe the bouquet. <laughs> Does anyone know? Oh my god! How uh, how powerful is that supposed to be? Uh, no, Brian, you mispronounced it. Okay. It's how powerful. How powerful is it? How powerful is that? It burns. It, man, it really. It smells like somebody took. It smells like somebody took uh, uh, orange A slices out of their butt. Orange slices candy and mixed it with paint thinner and uh, it dissolved in there. Uh, Mark is saying, keep Why don't away. You go from- ahead and get your get your mouth up in it. Oh man! All right, let me. I'll take me a sippy. All right, Brian's taking a sip right now. Describe it for the audience. <sighs> um, I guess. V- How v- good of a bit do you think this is so far? <laughs> vodka, vodka like? I don't know. Uh, I think it's gonna get. I think it's gonna get funnier the more of that I drink. All right, let's go ahead and take our first call. Uh, let's see, caller, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, Brian. Uh, this is Stencer Guy. I just wanted to report that I I, I had a little bit of uh, ruin them when I was uh, at the cigar lounge with yeah. y'all. The second I landed, boom, 6.0 earthquake. Wait a minute. You just drank. Ruin them, and when you sip. came, and when you came home, there was an earthquake. Absolutely, that's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, 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 hi, mate. Do you want to you want to play the game? Yeah. No, pick them. Sure. Pick them. Pick them one from the grab bag. I'm All gonna... right, that's a number six. You're gonna work up a number six on them, and that's uh, to to curse like a Mormon. Hi, mate. <laughs> curse like a Mormon. Oh gosh, that is gonna be damn. Uh, shut the door. Uh, curses. <laughs> it's perfect. All right, thank you very much. Hi, yeah, that was a, that was a win. That was a winner. How you feeling about this bit now, Justin? See, freaking gold. It's going great. Let's take another call. All right, Ryan, you're on the air. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you were hey. doing the show. Come on, man. What's up? Yeah, slide some of that uh, moonshine my way, buddy. Yeah, dude. I, are you, have you had moonshine? People are You're saying, not allowed to have that, I, Ryan. Uh, actually, I have. It uh, it tastes like fire, but after a couple shots, it's, it's fine. You stop. You stop caring about life or how you're feeling. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, pick a number. Here we go. Um, um, no, you don't pick oh, crap. Yeah, Shut you up. don't pick crap. Just kidding. Oh, All right, you got a number three. You have to sing yacht rock. Are you ready to hear the? Uh, the definition of yacht rock. Yeah, do you, have you, are you familiar with yacht rock? I'm not. I have no I, clue. Yacht is. rock is 80 songs. Uh, oh, okay, here's ahead. the deal. According to Urban Dictionary, a dictionary written by and for urbans, another name for uh, yacht rock is another name for adult contemporary musical movement of the late 70s and early 80s. It was defined mostly by its smooth sound. Popular yacht rockers include Kenny Loggins. The Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan. Wait, oh, uh, like like Blackwater would be uh, Yacht Rock? Uh, or uh, we also have Michael McDonald, Kenny G, Stevie Nicks, Toto. Uh, Toto. And then it says here in this definition, think of dudes in their 50s cruising the harbor and snorting cocaine on their yachts, <laughs> blasting Kenny G, and you'll be able to picture those who enjoy Yacht Rock. <laughs> oh, that's, my God. It's pretty good. I think we're 100%. Are you ready to sing yeah, some? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I might be able to, All right. to get some uh, Kenny Loggins going. All right, go ahead. All right, here we go. All right. Highway to the danger zone. <laughs> Gonna take you right into the danger zone. All right, perfect. You are set free. Congratulations. Say, you yes, passed the test. Me. Nicely done, sir. Hey, I just realized that uh, because we're recording on a Monday and not a Tuesday, we don't have our rundown of sponsors. So if anyone wants to scramble over uh, at the Brian, studio. What? 
I do have a rundown of sponsors. You want to take a moment to thank them? Uh, yes, Brian, I would. Today we are sponsored by Audible.com. Man, okay, can I tell you a sincere story about Audible? Um, okay, so Audible, of course, is the leading uh, provider of audio entertainment. Uh, but today, so I'm, I'm going, I'm reading all these like development books, and all of them like mention. What are they developing? I don't know, like just getting better at everything. Like the one I'm reading right now is so good they can't ignore you, which is about that. Like that's a phrase from, uh, from Steve Martin. Uh, who said, like, uh, just be so good that they can't ignore you. And this guy wrote a book talking about how, like, following your passion is dumb. Like, because you don't even know what your passion is. You do, you think you know your passion, and you're using your job as a means to an end. And instead, what you got to do is figure out what you can be so good at they can't ignore you, because you'll get passionate about it when you start kicking a bunch of asses, right? And, uh, and yeah. along the way, he mentions some other book. And I don't even remember. That's how fast it was. He was like, here's another awesome book. I stopped my run. I just open up Audible uh, website, and uh, I'll do one of two things. If I have credits, I'll just go ahead and buy it right then and spend a credit. If I don't, I'll just click add to wish list. And now, down the road, when I'm looking to fill up my queue with more stuff, I always have more awesome books that are recommended by other books. Dude, uh, I had a similar experience. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I had to drive a long way from uh, Salt Lake City to uh, Oakland, and uh, I wound up downloading... Right here on my phone, ladies and germs. I walked into a a, a McDonald's in <laughs> Battle Mountain, Utah, or a, no, Battle Mountain, uh, Nevada. All right. I walked into a McDonald's and I got uh, Hyperion or the sequel to Hyperion. Um, Dude, I hear amazing. Right there things on my phone, about, I started listening to it. I, th I hear amazing things about Hyperion. Hyperion's really, really great, and it's all there, bro. All the all the books, man. I can listen to all of them. Fall of Hyperion. That's what it's called. I started listening to it, and it's amazing, and it's great. Uh, me and you, Brian, we've been on the Audible train for years. All right, well, here's the important thing. It's amazing. Thing. Yeah, you can get Audible for free. Get a free download on us. All you got to do is uh, go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. That's there you the deal. Go. So you go there, you sign up, you get a free book, and they they ain't even going to be mad if you just cancel immediately. And you're like, thanks for the free book, out. Because they know, they know, you get a little taste. You get, you get a little taste, you're going to be sucked in. You're going to be reading books. Uh, all right, so there we go. Uh, Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Uh, look, listen to these names. Tina Fey, Ronald, uh, Roald Dahl, Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, everybody who's ever I, written I, uh, a book is and on This Audible. is not even com. a lie. I, we, we joke about it, but like I'm mad at the idea of reading a book, like physical pages. It, you're just it's dumb and stupid and a slow way to read a book. You get an expert audiobook reader, so much better. All right, let's take. Who a call. am I, Carmen San Diego, with that kind of time <laughs> to read a book, evading the law? All right, hold on. We got. Come we got, on. We got a caller I, on the I'm line. A busy man. Tess is podcast.com slash NSFW. Yeah. Hey, Tess, what's going on? Talk to us. Hi, how's it going? Uh, we're doing really, really well. We're drinking moonshine and, and operating on no sleep. What's up with you? Um, Awesome. I've done that before. I had um, my great aunt's Romanian boyfriend brought some back from Spain one time in a Fanta bottle, you know, as you do, back from the funeral. So it's good stuff. <laughs> I was, I was going to give you sass until you finished your story, and I was blown away. Uh, That's my life. <laughs> hey, uh, what All right, you, are you ready right. for your number? Yes, I am. All right, here we go. I'm going to roll the dice here. And it uh, looks like you came up uh, with a seven. Let me just uh, check my things here. Your All document. Right. Uh, what's your name again? Tess. Tess, you have to confess a secret in Pig Latin. Um, I really don't know Pig Latin. <laughs> uh, okay, just say the... We'll translate for you. You just say the secret, and we'll say it in Pig Latin for you. Okay, here's my secret. I have... Well, Definitely border wait, jump. Hold on. Wait, what? two Whoa. different times. <laughs> what? What? Wait, wait, wait. What, Justin? You don't know Pig Latin? I don't know. I'm a girl who grew up in um, Iowa. I just learned Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> pig Latin is like fake. You know, Latin? That Pig Latin isn't like a real thing. Like, there's no scholars for Pig Latin. <laughs> Oh, you mean there isn't like a little tiny like pig that had like a toga that was running around and like riding like? Actually, uh, I prefer to think of the pig Latin as like he's got a mustache and kind of a, a poofy shirt and he's seducing uh, someone. 
I'm the pig yeah. Latin. Yeah. I see, I'm I see. Latin. No, I never I'm... learned pig Latin. Pig, pig Latin is you just take the first letter off, put it at the back, and add a, a at the end. So, like, pig so like, Latin. So, your name would be S T. Right. And Alrighty. pig Latin would be Ig Pe Atten Lay. Okay. So, um, let's see here. Secret. Um, I A. I'm an A of clay. A, uh, Oh, Tay, I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just tell us the secret. I don't care. You lose. <laughs> what? Yes, I do. Can we, can we at least get to hear the secret, Justin, or do I have to hang out? Yeah, what's the secret, Tess? Oh, I was going to say, I have uh, definitely border jumped two different countries at two different times illegally, and that just came up the other day, and I was amused by that. <laughs> which which, uh, which okay. countries? Go on, uh, elaborate. I went from Peru to Chile um, because I knew somebody at immigration, so I just jumped the line and just kind of went over the border. And I've done Canada once, but that was because I was trying to get away from uh, DNR, and so we just crossed the border. You know, DNR. You. What's that? What's DNR? The Department of Natural Resources. They're the guys that like come after you if you have like too many fish or if you're hunting in the wrong place. Wait, so or you were you were out poaching, and then you almost got Who caught. Who are so you, you ran Yogi to... Bear? This is amazing. <laughs> I'm the one that was in Chile that one time and then tried to help you, Justin, with like the South Dakota teaching thing. Wow. What? Dude, <laughs> Justin's face just got struck by electricity. That was amazing. <laughs> That's that is uh, you are very you are you live a very interesting life. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> but so never learned pig Latin. Well, the, now tonight we fixed that as well. That's amazing. Amazing. You've solved so many problems All tonight. Right. Well, thank you very much, Tess. This is the best well, thank call you, of night. Yeah, you win the award. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's go. JC uh, Brian, Bobbitt. I think people want to hear um, about our, our little show that we did at Nerdtacular because it seemed to be fairly popular. All right. Well, first, let me take a real quick call because I already clicked go. JC, what's oh, up? Okay. What's up, guys? Hey, man. This is the part where you tell us uh, to pick a number or, or say something interesting. Oh, oh, no. What's well, your yeah. name? Pick a number. Yeah, pick a number, Justin. JC. This is JC on the line. This is Jesus Christ is on the line. All right, here we go. I'm trying to get a number that we haven't got before. All right, here we go. What is it? Uh, you've rolled number four, which is you solve our problem. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. All right. So Brian, uh, do you have a yeah, problem no, I, you want to okay. give to JC? Here, here's the problem, JC. Whenever we do the two Skype thing, we get like this high pitched whine between the two <laughs> between the two mixers. How do we fix that? Um tear it all apart and start from scratch. Uh and if that doesn't work, uh move to Petaluma. All right. Dude, that was a very direct response. Well done. Yes. Hey, where are the white women at? Congratulations. You did it, JC. You got anything you want to say to America and all the Americas um, at sea? Not at all. Not all right, bye. All. Get out of here. You got no ambition. Uh, okay, so do you want to talk a bit about the concert, the, our first live comedy album, Night Attack Live, that we did? So we did uh, we did a, a show there at Nerdtacular, and, and normally what happens when we do live shows is we just kind of do the podcast, which is... You know, we do some bits and and we talk to the audience and we just have a good time. This time we actually did like a little improv thing. Uh, like uh, we had talked about going into it. We had a bunch of characters. We decided to really just do characters that we have done on the show. Um, and we had a, a few surprises. Do you, do you want to go through the set list? Yeah, or? let me let me get a quick read from the chat room. Uh, if you're in the chat room, say either didn't see it, watch the stream or was there. And I just want to kind of get a get a feel for everyone there. R.I.P. Reggie. <laughs> and 13. Uh, so didn't didn't see it. Was there? Uh, watch the stream. Wow, a lot of didn't see it. This is great. This is fantastic. Almost nobody saw it. That's this is great because this is. And and if we could be a little bit confessional here, would you say, Justin, that we were a little bit terrified going into this because we had the idea, but. It's one thing to say, hey, here's here's the end of the evening. We can hop on a stage and make some noise. But it's another thing to spend like seven hours doing panels and drinking all day and hanging with fans and then decide to hop on stage with none of our like NSFW is all about our toys. It's all about hiding behind our Batman toolkit of having bits and, and transitions and monkey bars to swing from. 
Um, yeah, I, I think, well, there's, there's parts of that. I mean, it really like, that is a part of NSFW show and this would really be eliminating that, that <laughs> element, you know? Um, and, and, uh, God damn it. Rob Duran, I went ahead and I queued him up cause I didn't want to let him go. Cause I wanted to talk to Rob Duran. I'm excited that he's watching. And then it turns out he's one of those collar turned on your radio people. That's all right. Keep going. Oh, okay. Justin. So, um, yeah, this was, was all just us doing improv with characters and everything. And, and we'd never done it before. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. I was terrified. It was very scary, but at the same time, it's, you know, there's a lot of what we do that's really scary and terrifying. And, and it's all about you get a pretty good practice at turning off your brain and just like trying to be funny. And that was what we did. And, and people seemed to dig it. Well, and, and to be clear, we decided we, we our entire prep was we'll sit down. Let's pick uh, a bunch of names and make up a show. So we, we listed, we actually went to the BBpedia and looked at all the characters that we'd made up over the years. And we made a list of which ones, you know, we, okay, you're in, you're out. We, we moved the order around no preparation, no expectations of where the conversation was going to go or what the jokes were going to be or where we were going to take it, uh, which was terrifying. And, and we talked about this just before we went out, like as a magician, I had never ever experienced walking live on stage with the stated of intention of I will entertain you for an hour without any structure whatsoever. Uh, I mean, outside of having a list of names and uh, yeah. son of a bitch, man, we we freaking did it. It was like we had uh, do, uh, and we're going to we're going to get it nicely produced. We're going to have um, your friend of mine. Rob Kreckle is taking a look at it right now. Try to goose up the audio. We're going to edit it down. And we're going to release it as a live comedy album. And I, I got to tell you, in some ways, this is uh, th this is the I'm more proud of this than anything else we've ever done. Um, yeah, I mean, like you want to you want to read off uh, who? Uh, yes. Who, who showed up? Well, here, why don't we do this? I'll just I'll just play some clips and hopefully won't land. Uh, I, they, I lose if I land on a name on a moment that happens to. Have curses in us talking to each other. No, here we go. It's okay. Oh, oh, here we go. It's They're writing so much. Oh, we oh, take it. Oh, go! come on, Brian. Oh, boo. I oh, that didn't have no points. And may God have mercy on your soul. All right, so I bet you guys could guess the first character that we had was. So uh, uh, yeah, hype man, hype man came out and uh, and got the show started. Yep. Uh, that led into our first interview. Yep. Uh, no. Were you ashamed of the news? Uh, it was, uh, Did you not think you had the talent? There was not a. There was some bad things going on at the Stone Mill. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did did they touch you inappropriately? No, no. <laughs> My heavens, the Betsy Boogity B, Brian. No. I'm sorry, so dude. That was, you uh, touched my brother. <laughs> I was the uh, ad dragon. That was the ad dragon. We find out the secret history of ad dragon. I said trip, didn't I? Yeah. This is a trip. That's what we say in Parliament. So you are uh, what? What? What House of Parliament are you in? Uh, both. <laughs> like you were you in both the House of Lords and the House of Commons. If those are the two, then yes. So there we go. Right. Bottom is wind. Yep. Bottom is we wind. We have uh, amazing toaster guessed correctly. Bottom is wind was yeah. there. We'll see who can, whoever could be first is the big winner to say which one. Yeah. Yeah. I, no. I, should, should we do something about uh, it? Uh, it? Do me a favor. When the final album comes out, uh, when the Ad Dragon says that a mill worker touched his little brother, we need to change it to light padding. Like a light pat, like pat him on the back. He light, he light patted his brother. So he would say, the stone owner. Okay, they would say, yeah, that's Iris Sockman, which uh, I would say one of the three best tracks in the entire thing. Like that story that came out of Iris Sockman, he never once says, pretend I'm not here as well. Yeah, no, it was uh, shied away from the from the catch. Do you want to skip a little bit further into the Iris Sockman thing, or do you? Yeah, I actually do. do. Want to? No, no, it's worth it's worth. Here we go. It's you have to invest. You have to see uh, opportunities. Wait, Obviously. <laughs> well, so, it's, uh, it's, so his son One day, me and Goldfob were facing a bear. A bear? Yeah. You were camping together? No, we were warrioring. You were, oh, you, you, wait, are you a hunter? Uh, no, I was actually just there for moral support. So, oh, so you He just was did. warrioring, and I was saying, hey, good job. You're a brilliant warrior. So, so, so you're, like, you're like the warrior hype man in this case. Well, I mean, I would like to say... Uh, um, 
Sunshine on his shoulder. Is, is that a legal term? Yes. <laughs> so, okay, so you're warrior. That is only actually applicable in California and Florida. So you're, you're sorry. All you're, right. So I, anyway, oh, dude, the, the story that Ira tells is amazing. Uh, then uh, next character. See if you guys can identify it in the chat room. Um, uh, I mean, technically, sure. <laughs> So okay, okay. So you said it's 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 Sockman. Well, this is Sockman Iris. Oh, no, still Ira. That's right. Here we go. I eat to equivocate. <laughs> I eat to ameliorate. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know, what what is ameliorate? Eight and eights. Get it? Yeah. No, I got. What, what I is ended the words with eight. What, what does ameliorate mean? Eights. The you, past tense. You don't know what eights. ameliorate means, do you? Brian, I'm trying to run for president, not be the thesaurus. So, are you, are you going to run again? Of course I am. The, oh, you are? Why do you think I'm gaining all this weight? I'm carb loading. <laughs> yeah, carb loading? Yeah, but so, hey, so, well, you, that was my problem last time. I, I ran out of energy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, all right, so that's the Fat Rick Santorum. <laughs> Fat Rick Santorum's back. Uh, he, uh, he, uh, he holds a mock debate. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, why are you depressed, Daphne? Well, I was dating this really great guy. Yeah. What was his name? I, I, I keep secrets. Okay. <laughs> Is this I very responsible of you? No, that's okay. good. That's good. Okay. She learned that. See, and actually, I'm going to jump ahead on Daphne to see if I can get our tagline in but there. But my favorites. Right? But they're really not that good for protecting you. Oh. No. So were you no. playing the game, just running around in metal bikinis? Yeah, I mean, why not? It's <laughs> a very good point. And then there were, like, there were dragons, <laughs> and there were vampires, and I was like running all around, and then it was just like. And you were dying off. a lot. It was like really uncomfortable. Wait, it was, it was falling chafing. off. It was okay. It was a lot of chafing. Wait, you were wait, actually. Yeah, hold on, wait, it was wait, chafing wait, you while you, you were playing the game? <laughs> I, I like to be in character. <laughs> So wait, hold on, yeah. hold on. Am I, am I to be made to believe that while you're playing Skyrim and your character is in a metal bikini, you yourself were wearing a metal bikini? Immersion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, can I just say that was the biggest surprise? We came up with the idea of asking Daphne to be one of the characters two hours before we went live on stage, and we just suggested- I think that's also generous. <laughs> I don't know if it was even two hours. <laughs> it's, uh, it was amazing. It's actually a great photo. Daphne! And you probably oh. read one of the works by uh, famed Goosebumps author, ladies and gentlemen, R.L. Stein. I'm going to jump forward. <laughs> it's on R.L. Stein. Of course. They had a and, hot tub in the club area. And, and were you a member? No. But, and so you were, you were trespassing. It gave me the idea of my first Goosebumps novel. Oh, really? What was it? Yes. Golf course breaker in her. <laughs> And it, was it was about a young boy okay. who broke into a golf course. It did what? And then was haunted by a ghost called Reggie. <laughs> oh, legend of Reggie. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. R.L. Stein was a very uh, colorful guy that night. Oh, my God. Uh, I feel like we're on something weird. <laughs> my favorite was at the end. I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, R.L. Stein. And you stand up with the mic and say... I'm very high right now. <laughs> uh, Stein's got to get high. <laughs> it's true. Well, let's go ahead. Uh, is, is there any, uh, one more song that you felt was oh, compromised? So, 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 really, <clears throat> maybe you remember, uh, Vajadi, Vajada, <laughs> Vagina, Halila, Vagina. You remember that song? Well, I remember it as so Oblada, Oblada, no. and it goes on. Well, see, you, you know the corrupted version. It's not, <laughs> none of these. You don't know, uh, it's, it's, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, for the benefit of Mr. <laughs> Kite, we will look at a vagina tonight. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Vaginas are freaking awesome. Don't you agree, Mr. Kite? High five. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. That's uh, Vagina Paul, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Uh, a new character making his debut <laughs> here on the big stage. Please. That a captain must go down with his ship. Is, is that true? I went down on a girl named Ship. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, and, and it, how so did captain the... Morgan don't play that? Okay, all right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a uh, little, uh, that's a little preview of everything for you guys. So there we go. What's going to happen is we're going to edit it together, and uh, it'll be out there eventually. Uh, what do you think the uh, the idea? Two weeks. Two weeks. I, oh, I think really? our, our goal is to have it finalized and submitted within two weeks. That's I, I, well, I can't. Because I, I figure we just need to clean up the audio, 
and then do uh, some edits. There was a there was a couple of slow moments that we needed to snip out, and uh, uh, we'll take a look at some of the bootleg uh, impromptu stuff that we did with uh, right right after Scott Johnson's interview. And uh, and then if that's good, we'll throw that in as like bonus stuff. And then but a bing bang, we got a seventy minute live album, and uh, and and. We won't be we won't be fudging at all on the Billboard rules. Like we'll have a genuine one album for what three ninety nine, right? Is the cheapest we can do it and still be counted, and put it out there, right? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be really awesome. Um, people are asking uh, that they want the whole thing. Well, I don't think you're gonna get it. If you wanted the whole thing, you should have went to Nerdtacular. Well, and keep in mind, like the whole thing, you know, like we're talking about maybe six minutes of little snips and, and tucks throughout the whole thing just to speed it up. But man, yeah, okay. I mean, really, and the only stuff that the only stuff that, that really that isn't going to be in there is um, is probably there was like little bits in between the, the stuff where it was really just me and Brian talking to each other. Yeah, uh, like and, and not like bit stuff. I'm pouring something in here. Burr, burr, burr. Uh so I mean, like I would have no problem. I mean, like for fans, if you guys, if Diamond Club wanted to hear just that stuff, we'll strung get it together for free. Then that's fine. Yeah, we'll just put it up on the YouTube like we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you will get everything. There will nothing will be cut in the end. But uh, yeah, yeah. Hey man, you want to thank a sponsor? Yeah, I do. Uh, Shutterstock.com, Brian. Dude, Shutterstock is the place where they keep adding over 10,000 new images and videos added every single week. Totally professional, right, Justin? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Brian, at Shutterstock.com, you'll find the perfect image or video for, the, for your next creative project, whether it's for your website, a publication, an advertisement, a video, or any other type of project. You can choose from over 1 million high-quality stock video clips, That's 2D new. or 3D animation and motion graphics. Shutterstock gives you the video content you need to bring your creative projects to the next level. And they make it easy. Shutterstock has sophisticated search tools. You can search and drill down by category, resolution, contributor, and more. Shareable clip boxes. Save a video assets to a clip box, then access them anytime and share them with other team members. Shutterstock is a true global marketplace for buyers and creative contributors. They have multilingual customer service with dedicated corporate reps and full-time customer support throughout the week. Shutterstock, here's what we're going to do for you. You go on over to Shutterstock.com. You use that offer code, NSFW7. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sign up for a free account. No credit card needed. Start an account and begin using Shutterstock to help imagine what your next project could look like. Once you decide to purchase, use the offer code NSFW7 and new accounts. 30% off any package. Dude, 30% off. That means Take if you... Take that package and 30% of it, disappear it into a river. Fish. As if the mafioso solved your problem. Immersion. Just like that. Thank you very much, uh, Shutterstock. Shutterstock, 30% off new accounts. Use uh, offer code NSFW7. Seven. Seven, because we're in the seventh month. <clears throat> that way they know it was, like, up to date. It's ready to go. Uh, it's because... It, we're in seventh heaven. All right, look, let's get. When it uh, comes to Shutterstock, we're gonna open com. up. We're gonna open up phones again. But I want. Uh, I want Rob Duran to call in. Uh, did you know that Bill Duran, pre previous to this weekend, did you know that Bill Duran, aka Chin Beard, had a twin brother? I did actually. Had you ever met him? No. Uh, uh, this weekend was the first time I met him. Uh, shockingly, they look a lot alike. Okay, I was prepared for that. What I was not prepared for was the fact that they sound exactly alike. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know what it's not alike? What? When they get drunk and try to do push-ups, uh, the not chin beard one is better. Really? And I got proof. Really? Okay, hold on. Let's get him on the line. All right, Rob. Mind you're, proof. You're live, Hello. buddy. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much. We're all hanging out at Casa de Chin Beard. And I've run into the other room, thus uh, circumnavigating the mute issue. You sound exactly like Bill. There's no difference between you guys. Did, did you right. know that uh, the only real difference between the two of us is that I can do slightly more push-ups? <laughs> as, as we just heard. So, so it's not chin beard, it's lip stash. Lip stash. Right. The stash is gone, but the spirit remains. Yeah. All right, here we uh, go. Robert, you ready to play a number? quick game where you're going to hear a voice and uh, you guys get to guess who it is? Yes. 
You got it. You got no. a line prepped. No. No, no, that's us. Yes. We're, we're conferring. No. Ahoy, Brian. Come on, come on. <laughs> that sounds like Bill Duran. That was Bill. I got. Yes. We got another one. Ready? All right. Ahoy, Brian. That's that's Rob. That's, that's it is, Rob. yes. Wow. Holy. Holy. Holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> Hey, Wonder Twins, why don't you let us do the goddamn game, all right? <laughs> I'm going to give you a stupid number, and you're going to do a silly thing. Uh, that's what I was looking Here's forward the deal. to. Yes. You, rolled a, you rolled a three. No. Yes. No, you rolled a three. You have to sing Yacht Rock. Yes! And, oh, and, and did you, you do your, that one? You I and, was going to. Oh, okay. You and your brother together. Oh, Bill? Get back here, Bill. <laughs> That's his stern daddy voice. Oh, <laughs> yacht rock song. Uh, what, Steely Dan? St- is Steely Dan yacht rock? Sure. Yeah. What's Steely Dan song. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like Ricky, don't lose that number. Come on, hurry up, bro. Something about a number. It's the Ricky only one you've got. There. You might lose it if you feel. I right, hung up on them. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. I man. swear to God, if I wasn't positive I was hallucinating, I would have <laughs> swore that happened. <laughs> <laughs> man, the Duran brothers, man, they know how to party. Them and Viking Lass and crew, like they, they got, they got nutty. There's some drinkers. Yeah, they're serious. And by the way, um, I, I, I finally got to talk to uh, the Terpster. Yeah, Mark the Terpster Turpin. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I think it's about time we brought him on home. Oh to my God, SFW show. Yeah, totally. Are you kidding me? This is them pushing yeah. up. I can't believe, I can't believe the, the allegedly healthy guy did it. Did you see this? Uh, no, I didn't see the final version. Came out pretty good. We got that. That's uh, amazing. The last supper of everyone, all the producers and. <laughs> Do you see, uh, can you zoom in on, on my, uh, my Judas weapon? Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can scroll it down here and get a little zoomy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right there with the, uh. Oh, with me, the beer. Yeah, I can't. I can't pull it down anymore. Oh well. Yeah, there you go. You could. You could see that's a beer right there. <clears throat> all right, this guy's been calling all day. It's Dick Rand von Hunting Taint. What's going on, man? Go for Dick Rand. I'm here. Yay! Good. You you ready to pick a number? Ready to go. Do all it. right, there Thank we you. go. Assign him a number, Justin. All right. Uh, we are rolling, rolling, rolling. Here we go. Uh, you have rolled a eight. Uh, you need to tweet a picture of your mom. Yes. Oh, what's the hashtag? Uh, hashtag is um, who wants to bang this bro? <laughs> <laughs> How about NSFW mom? That way we can find it easily. <laughs> I don't know if that's better than who wants to bang this bro. <laughs> <laughs> Done. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and log in and start uh, searching right now. And, and that's really wrong, Justin. Yeah, well, it's so wrong, it's right, and we're not the ones about to tweet out pictures of our mom. So there. You ever think about that? Again, it doesn't have to be a nasty picture of your mom, oh, man. It can be a very a classy, gorgeous photo. It is. Oh man, uh, 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 uh. NSFW mom. Whoa, no, what is it? D2 D2 is is already putting up a uh, a status. Holy here. crap! It's already up. He I already told you done, man. He just did it. That's amazing. Hold on, let's see, Brian, put it up there. All right, let me uh. Look at that right there, <laughs> Dick Rand von oh, Hunting Day. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, man. That's awesome. All right. That's well, Mrs. Von Hunting Taint. There you go. So now, uh, now you get rewarded by getting dumped the hell off the stream. So there's that. All right, Toucan Monkey's on the line. Toucan, what's up? Hey. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, good lord, Toucan. I came Toucan. here to do a challenge. Oh, yeah, well, well, let's bring it. Let's, let's do it. All right, all right, here we go. I'm rolling you a random number. Uh, all right, we are going to solve your problem. You've uh, rolled a two. Give us, a, give us a problem in your life, and we'll solve it. 
Um, all right, I don't have a car and I can't get anywhere. What do I do? I don't know. Wait, what, why do you well, need to go anywhere? What do you want to do? Yeah, like, what's the point of going anywhere? You're just going to die alone. I want to hang out with everyone at Nerdtacular. Well, you, you don't need a car for that. You call well, where a cab. Where were you otherwise? You fly, yeah. Um, well, then what about Dragon Con? D- same, same crap. All right, hold on. Whoa, whoa. Where are you now? San Diego. Well, all right. Number one, you're in San Diego. Why do you want to go to all these other conferences? You can go to, to Comic Con. Yeah, why aren't you at Comic Con right now? Because you guys. Why aren't you going to rub your balls right on some lady cosplaying over there at Comic Con? Kami, yeah, all you communists over at Comic Con. Is that where the communists hang out? Yeah. I guess I should hang out there now. All right. You have a very sexy voice for a man. <laughs> Thanks. Has anyone I ever just told you that? Today. You, he says he just turned 12 today. Uh, look, man, do you really need a car? Is this then for you? You have a very sexy voice for a boy. <laughs> do you need... Oh, thanks. Uh, okay, here's the solution. Curly, of course, uh, is a friend of ours on the show. He lives in San Diego. He'll just drive you around from now on, okay? Okay, cool. Thanks. Anywhere you want to go. Take care. That's that's science. You have a new best friend. A new bile best friend. That's, Brian, we just made friends. Tackle. And by made friends, down, I mean, we didn't damn. befriend anybody. Radio. We made other people be friends. All right, Collar, you're on. What's, what's up? <clears throat> hey, uh, how's it going? Hey. Great. Uh, I got. I want to take the challenge, man, of course. Okay, good. All right, here we go. Now, I'm what rolling you, your number. What are you hoping for? Are you hoping for one of them? Oh, uh, you know, I never really got into that hope thing. <laughs> It was like, hope is a leftover, man. Haven't you ever heard the story of Pandora's box? (laughs) Hope is nothing but sloppy seconds. Ask Pandora's box. (laughs) All right. You want to know what? You have rolled a one, which means... Whoa! (laughs) Uh Eighth grade math problem. Yeah! Uh Uh-oh. All right, here we go. You got this, man. Look, you're about to win a billion Brian bucks, which if you ask my kids... All right, here we go. ...are worth nothing. Uh... Besides 15 and 1, what is one factor of 15? Fifteen. Besides 1 and 15, dummy. Oh, well, you did that wasn't very clear. I I couldn't hear you when you said that. Besides Three. 15 and 1, what is one factor of 15? Got it. Three. Yep. Five. Let's see. Three and three. Five. Submitting. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I love the fact that you needed to. <laughs> I think you needed to submit it. <laughs> Zombies, the Zombie Jesus would be very disappointed oh my, right now. I, I won me. Yeah, you won, buddy. You win at All life. All right. Bye. All right, man. <clears throat> we got to, uh, man, we got Taylor. Zombies. Zombies. Caller, turn down your radio. I want me. Yeah, you yep, I just hung up on them. Screw them. Chris, what's going on, buddy? Hey, I want to take the challenge. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing good. It's been a while since we've heard from you on the show. Yeah, we got our tickets for Dragon Con. Thanks yeah. to Make-A-Wish. Right on, dude. That's fantastic. Hell yeah. All right. You have rolled I want to a nine. To my you need to... Uh, Reveal your voting history. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? Uh, Jesse Ventura and pretty much Democrat. <laughs> you know what? Plus 12 for voting for Jesse Ventura. That's that's a win. You you give him the winning sound. Right on, buddy. We'll see you at Dragon Con. Yep, see you there. All right. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, dude, I guess I guess that's that's just about Oh, oh crud. Uh, No, Brian, hold on. Before you crud it up, we need to tell everybody about one more sponsor. Holy crap, we have three sponsors this week? Pro XPN, Brian. Dude, I I've I here's how bad it's gotten with me and Pro XPN. My default now is I I have Pro XPN installed on all my computers. And by default, it goes online and starts up. And only if I need my full 50 megabits, for example, for right now for the for the stream or whatever. <clears throat> then I go ahead and I turn off the Pro XPN. But outside of that, I just take comfort in knowing that that all my stuff's private. Nobody's knocking on my door, messing with anything. Here's the problem, Brian. More, now more than ever, we're in we are in a world of declining privacy. 
Okay? It's true. And the freedoms and privacy, or privacy if you're British, that we have is under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you can and cannot see while keeping a record of everything you do. Plus, by the way, listen, if you want to delude yourself into thinking that free Wi-Fi at the coffee house, hotel, and airport isn't, isn't putting you at risk because your passwords and sensitive data can be intercepted, then, uh, you know, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. I'll tell you what, man. And it's haunted <clears throat> by four ghosts. You want to... Uh... You want to you want to have your world set straight? Spend one afternoon talking with Darren Kitchen about how he makes his living selling his Wi-Fi pineapples. His Wi-Fi pineapples are these gizmos that he'll set up like outside of houses or outside of um, at airports, and all it does is say yes, and all of a sudden act as an intermediary to where you think you're connected to the local coffee shop's Wi-Fi. You're not. You're connected to his Wi-Fi pineapple, and he's capturing everything that you send. As he passes it along. So it's like, you're like, I'm on the internet. Everything's great. But meanwhile, it's all been gotten. And if it's unencrypted, it's all... you're screwed. Darren Kitchen, <clears throat> you want to know what he's cooking up? A little mayhem. Yeah. Because his last name's Kitchen, Brian. Oh, I got it. That took me a moment. I apologize. <laughs> I'm like, uh, that certainly Here's is. Here's the deal. Foil Darren Kitchen by getting Pro XPN. It's a global VPN. Works with any internet connection. Creates a secure encrypted tunnel for which all your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, and instant messaging programs. Uh, you know, you can protect yourself against the six strikes rule. Yeah, dude. Think about it. That six strikes, like, they catch you once, and then they they, they send you a nasty gram, and you're tainted. You got a mark on you. They're all like, oh, that's that, that's that guy who bit torrents. Don't trust him. We caught him on the bit torrent once. And then they just keep making uh, it worse. ProXPN... What they have like six day retention, so it's like, it's like uh, if they think they're like we think he's BitTorrent thing. They show up like when last week they're like sorry bro I ain't got no records. Check the records. Yeah, they're like there is none. There ain't none. Six day retention. Exactly. That's all we got. So here's the deal: exactly. bypass internet filtering and blocked websites. Uh, bypass geographical restrictions for internet content and online video. Tell you what, it can really stretch that dollar for a lot of services that that people pay for or. Let's say you want to catch uh, shows that are airing in the UK. Would you live in America? And they're like, hey, you can't do that because we're in the UK. Uh-uh. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Now I got Pro XPN. He's going to speak British to you, and you're going to like it. That's true. Um, all you got to do is go to proxpn.com slash twit, and then use offer code NSFW. Now, the Pro XPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. Here's the deal. When you buy it, 20% off. You want to know what it's 20% off of, Brian? Off of what? It ain't just the price. What do it's you mean? It's the price for life. Wait, forever? The lifetime of your account. Forever? 20% off. Okay, that's freaking rad. All right, it's less than five bucks a month for the yearly plan. And I'll tell you what, if you ain't satisfied, <laughs> then you go ahead and cancel it within seven days. And then no, it just full on backseas. No harm, no foul. Full refund. Yeah. ProXPN.com slash twit. Use the code NSFW. We thank ProXPN for defending freedom and sponsoring NSFW show. Yeah. Hey, man. So um, do you realize that I got an email from Tomcat? You remember last week, The Hurt? This little song? Wait. Yes. And it's such an empty, empty space. Here you go. I'm looking at this. pain and shame and blame. Yes. So why <laughs> did I let you down? I'm telling you. Okay, so here. I'm going to pause bringing this. me back, Brian. I know. Okay, first of all, that song is a hell of an earworm. Because I totally, <laughs> going around Nerdtacular, I'm like, stop the lies and realize. Totally stuck in my head. And then I get an email. And uh, it says, uh, it says, hello, I am Tom Cat's cousin. <clears throat> and having seen him as a younger man, I can absolutely verify that he is exactly what you will look like in 10 years. That was the, that was so the there, opening. There, he starts off throwing heat. <laughs> It was a, that was that was the that was the opening moment on that, and I was like, "Shut up!" And it said he said that Tom would love to be on the show, and I just about crapped my pants. I'm like, "Yes!" So uh, we're working out the details on when 
uh, we we didn't have enough time to get him on tonight. Although allegedly, okay, here's the deal. Tom Cat is allegedly in the chat room right now. Yes, he's allegedly in the chat room. And I'll tell you what I love about uh, here's what's great about Tom Cat and Tom Cat. I'm talking about the entire internet. The entire internet rely. Uh, it's a it's a place that rewards boldness. Uh, a a yeah. place that rewards somebody who doesn't give a good goddamn what you think. Who just wants to rock in their own way? How and about somebody who wants to stop the lies and realize, <laughs> and realize yes. the hurt he's caused inside? But it's so oh god, I love how over the top all the top guest stuff is. Uh, here's the thing: we're, we're we wanted to uh, we talked about having him next week, but we were already booked with the double clicks live in studio. Double clicks are going to be live up in here, right? Uh, rocking their sauce all over our faces. Two weeks from tomorrow, though. Two weeks, uh, so what is this, uh, uh, ninth, two weeks, ninth, 23rd. The 23rd, we're looking at having Tom Cat on. He'll perform stuff uh, from his album. He's going to be right here with us. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, love it, love it, love it. It's going to be incredible. So you're going to, this is the homework here, chat room. You got to go ahead and, and get get up to speed on your on your cat. On yes. your 105.9. Yeah, head on cat. over and get his album. It's, uh, it's $8.99 over at Amazon. Uh, and uh, here, you want to listen to some of the other stuff? Well, yeah, I guess the only question, if this is really Tomcat in the studio, um, uh, where where is Tomcat located? Yeah, actually, that's a really good question. And, and maybe if he's anywhere near Northern California, we'd love to have him live in studio oh here so we can uh, make him look all good. No, yeah, the, uh, the, the studio setup is going to look the best from uh, previous... Oh, Toronto. Well, that's what, that's what uh, Mollusk was guessing. I don't know whether or not it's Tom Cat. Oh, yeah, he He's is from, from Canada. Canada. Right, well, if you want to be in studio, you could be in the fabulous Petaluma location where you could get uh, professional everything. If you just want to appear over Skype, we're happy to do that, and you could perform some stuff live for us. Uh, but I'll tell you what, man, you're an internet treasure. You're an internet treasure of a man who is just rocking his sauce, and it's amazing. Uh, and I look forward to looking exactly Tom Cat, like you. And, and you're gonna love Tom Cat. Because he's gonna he's gonna bring the hurt, the hurt to NSFW. <laughs> that I want to see like a a, a, a wrestling poster. Tomcat bringing the hurt to NSFW. <laughs> All um, right, man. I guess uh, are we are we wrapping up? Somebody somebody uh, agent Oso says not to be a downer, but uh, here's a mention of a guy who died. It's like. <laughs> What do you mean uh, not to be? A I was not. I was not really familiar with, with Ryan Davis, the Giant Bomb. Were you? Uh, were I, you familiar I, with his work? No, I'm not familiar with Ryan Davis directly. But of course, everybody in the games industry is, and and was, and has been. And of course, uh, Jeff Gersman and I uh, dance slow danced about a year ago around this time. No, what am I talking about? Over a year ago. Uh, so I've always been fond of the Giant Bomb crew, and so they're they're very much hurting right now. So it's like, well, I know, mean, the guy's dude, 30, 34 dies years at 34. old. Thirty four. Yeah. Like 34, 34 a week, is a week after older, he got married. older than me and younger than you. It, it splits the difference between our ages, and that is very weird and disturbing to think of. Yeah, no, it's 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 legit tragic, man. Uh, uh, Gatawag uh, listens to all of that stuff. Brant is uh, is hip to the giant bomb, and uh, and they just they sort of you know they they just dropped it. They're like, hey man, this is a freaking tragedy, and they just faced it head on. And I can't even imagine how difficult it is for them. And it's 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 tough. To even be a show that wants to laugh and frolic and shout "Die in a Fire" at the end of every episode, we, you know, when uh, when there's real tragedies out there. But well, I mean, listen, uh, I've I've always uh, and I genuinely believe that gallows humor is is uh, the sign that a sign if you do it right, and hopefully we we try to do it as about as right as we can, that uh, you understand that mortality is the <coughs> issue that we all wrestle with. And, oh no, and to and talk about it and explain it. And, and, no, and, is, uh, and in all seriousness, like um, to me, the way you win at life and you could you could play this at my funeral, you know, uh, we're all marching towards a cliff. And my job is to sing songs and laugh the entire way. And that's uh, and if I can get you to laugh along with me, if I can get you to sing along, then, you know, you, you brought joy yeah. out there, you know, and that's that's all that matters. And listen, I mean, this ain't about us. It's about uh, Ryan uh, Davis uh, passing away, and we we send all of our regards and and condolences to everybody at Giant Bomb. Everybody listened to the show. It's 
it's it's disgusting and it should never happen for someone to to uh to go that soon. Yep. Well, uh here, let's let's uh you ready to cleanse the palate? There. <laughs> Feeling better now? Little little like brown dancing. Okay, who's that handsome devil? <laughs> Uh, all right, man, we got to do the movie draft minute and then wrap things up. Uh, although we got to figure out, I'm going to put a challenge out to the folks who do the movie draft minute and see if you guys could possibly come up with a way to present the factual information in a way that doesn't make just Robert Young want to punch me. That's all I ask. It's not too much. Welcome to your movie draft minute for the week of July 8th, 2013. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. Though I am exhausted and my voice is shot due to RTX, the draft must go on. Here is this week's update. Cargill's in 6th place with $247.4 million. Scott Johnson's in 5th place with Lone Ranger bringing in $48.7 million this week, bringing his total to $321.2 million. Hey, is this the first time that Roberto sound a little drunk? Listen, listen to this. He sounds a little boozy. Yeah, well, at least, let's listen. $8.7 million this week, bringing his total to $321.2 million. Tom Ayers in fourth place with $361.4 million. Sarah Lane's in third place with $455.1 million. Justin Robert Young's in second place with $610.7 million. And in first place, with Despicable Me 2 bringing in $143 million this week, bringing his total to $638.5 million, it's Brian Brushwood. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of July 8th, 2013. Man. Like, that's you it. Made, you made the right call, Brian. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Oh, jeez. I, I, I don't... I don't... Yeah, whatever. Okay. It's, what? Well, I'm just... Uh, I, I want to talk about the movie draft because I love the movie draft, but uh, but I don't want to... Let's talk about the movie draft. Okay. I can talk about the movie draft. Two questions. Uh, what are you walking on eggshells about? Like, I'm going to yell at you? Well, okay. Get angry? What 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 is the most... God, I feel like an asshole. Uh, what is the most anyone's won by? Like, has anyone gotten over a billion dollars? It was It was like Tom last year, or was it you? I think I got over a billion last year. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Uh, because, like, looking that, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's a chance it could get over a billion. That'd be amazing. I think, yeah, no, you have a very good chance. You drafted very, very well. Yeah. Well, there's that. Uh, what was your second thing? Uh, I don't know. That, that I, I guess I only had the one. It was just derivations of the same discussion. Uh, so... Is there anything else? Wait, let's see. We talked about um, there's clips that are available from Nerdtacular if you want to see it. We're hoping we'll take a listen in the after show on some of the live improv Captain Morgan stuff that got recorded. We'll uh, hopefully add that up. Start thinking. We're hoping to release in like two or three weeks the live album. There's there's moments of like tear inducing brilliance in there. There's there's so, every single every single character was at least a base hit, but there were a couple of those. Like I don't know how that happened, Justin. For as tired as we was, and as was as tired as we were, and as as drunk as we were, like we don't sound drunk or tired. It sounds like like there's some part of us that was just watching everything. Uh, you know, I think it's it's why people like the show. Like we, there's a lot more of what we did on that album than I think we sometimes admit. Uh, because like for the for a lot of the same reason, even if we weren't. Uh, drunk or tired, you know, you just kind of turn off your 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 guidance systems and just try to be funny. And there's uh, this album is kind of all that, you know, it's it's us doing character stuff that uh, I think, uh, you know, is very exciting to me uh, to, to have out there. So I hope people like it. Yeah, man. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so I guess that's it for this episode of NSFW. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Dying a fire. Sure. But don't really. That's just the gallows humor talking. We really want to see you next Tuesday. I can't believe you survived it, Justin. It's freaking amazing. So what what am I looking at? Rest of the Old John Smoky Pizza? What? The next it's amazing. The show is through and it breaks my heart because I just can't bear to be apart from Seriously, guys. next week. Love you guys with all we are. You're literally the best thing that ever happened to us. Die in a fire. 
than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood. Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile than to do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while. Oh, NSFW. I love you. NSFW